next up, we have Larissa Fortuna. I hope I'm pronouncing the, that right. Uh, Larissa uh, is a product manager uh, at GitHub, uh, managing the GitHub Actions and porting it to ARM64, which uh, was recently uh, released as of June, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, so let's give a hand to Larissa. Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to this late hour. For me, it feels like very late because this is usually my dinner time. So thank you for being here. Uh, like Tito said, I'm Larissa Fortuna, and I am a product manager at GitHub working primarily on actions. And what I love about my job as a product manager is I get to work with such a wide variety of customers on a really unique set of problems. So I get to work with open source developers all the way up to the largest enterprises. And when I'm able to work with the customer to solve their problem within actions, it really just kind of brings me a sense of joy. Um, so today I'm going to take you through GitHub's journey towards uh, bringing ARM hosted runners to actions, as well as kind of walk you through the growth of ARM64 processors in the cloud and kind of talk a little bit about how you can use ARM to build faster, um, run your code more efficiently, and ultimately help kind of meet your sustainability goals. So let's get started with an analogy. Uh, so I have a three-year-old son, um, and he is obsessed with trash trucks. Uh, has anyone here ever seen the show on Netflix, Trash Truck? It's pretty good. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's no bluey, but it is up there. Uh, but my son, he has this trash truck toy, and it's pretty big. And what he loves to do with this toy is he drives it around in circles all around my house, all around my living room, my kitchen, and it makes a ton of racket. And he will do this for what feels like hours. Uh, I also have a one and a half year old daughter and she didn't really know what to do with this behavior at first of my son's and what would happen is she would be sitting there and my son would come around the corner and he would run right into her and knock her over. I'm signed up. Please do not judge my parenting by this story. Um, so she learned what she learned to do is she would hear the trash truck coming and she would get out of the way. She would move out of the way and my son would continue on his loop. But eventually she decided that no, that wasn't good enough for her and she was going to stand her ground. So now what she did is she stood there and shook her little finger at him and she said, no, no, no. And she would shout at him. So my son, he had to learn to divert and go around her. Now my daughter had a problem. She was being run into by the trash truck and she solved it by standing her ground and shouting. Similarly, developers had a problem in GitHub Actions where they <laughs> could not develop on ARM. <laughs> you like that segment? That's a great segment. Um, and they couldn't develop natively on ARM within Actions. And at first, they solved it by using emulation. That was their way of kind of going around it, like my daughter going around the trash truck. And the problem with emulation is that it's long, it's slow, it's kind of cumbersome, and it's really just not a great experience. So what developers did is they stood up and they shouted, no, no, no at us, and they asked for ARM. And so that is what ultimately has led to the launch of the ARM runners just this past June um, to the relief and delight of developers, and it's generated a ton of excitement in the community. Um, so I want to kind of talk about how we got here. So let's go back to the launch of GitHub Actions in 2019. Um, now, at the time of launch, GitHub Actions supported two underlying flavors of compute. There are self-hosted runners, which you bring your own infrastructure and manage that infrastructure yourself, or there are GitHub hosted runners, which are managed fully managed by GitHub. And when GitHub Actions launched, it supported exclusively x64 processors. It didn't support ARM, but driven by community requests, they very quickly enabled the ability to build on ARM for self-hosted runners. And that was for Linux and for Windows. And that is actually still the paved path right now for open source developers to build on ARM within Actions is you can bring your own ARM machine from the cloud provider of your choice and run your Actions workload on that self-hosted runner. Now, after that, we kind of had to take a pause and we waited for the industry to kind of catch up before we could enable that on GitHub hosted runners. Part of the process of launching a runner is that we need certain OSS libraries to be compatible with ARM. And we were kind of in this chicken and the egg problem where those open source libraries wanted to build on ARM natively in GitHub, but we needed them to support ARM. So we were kind of just both dependent on each other and neither of us were supporting ARM at the time. 
Uh, I also want to take a step back and talk about the rise of ARM in the data centers because that also plays a part here. Um, now, GitHub is an Azure shop. We are owned by Microsoft. And as an Azure shop, we are limited in the type of compute we can offer by what Azure offers. And at that time, Azure did not have an ARM VM offering. So they just didn't offer one yet. And so since they couldn't offer it, we couldn't offer it in turn. But there are a couple of key events that uh, led to the rise of ARM. And I was laughing earlier because Phil had a very similar slide. So thanks, Phil. Shout out. Um, there's a couple key events that led to the rise of ARM64 processors in the cloud. Um, and it starts back in 2018, really, with the AWS Graviton product. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's their ARM64 processors. It's their homegrown processors. They launched those in 2018. In 2020, they came out with Graviton2, which is really when we see the first general purpose VMs uh, for customers. And then 2021 starts gaining some traction. Oracle has an ARM offering. And then we also see that ARM starts, or AWS starts reporting that 15% of their server deployments are now actually on ARM, on Graviton. And that kind of starts to make it pick up a little bit more. And in 2022, you have Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud both launching their ARM VMs, and those are both on Ampere chips. Now, why does this matter? Um, well, the rise of these ARM offerings in the cloud is really what unblocks uh, cloud native cloud native applications and cloud native customers from beginning to be able to deploy on ARM in the cloud. And we still see that momentum continuing as recently as this year when Microsoft announced their Cobalt chip, which is their own homegrown ARM chip. So it's really, it, it hasn't slowed down. Um, now, why do we see this push towards ARM in the data centers? Um, so looking at the ARM chip design, it's actually shown to be 30 to 40% more energy efficient than an equivalent x64 processors. Why do data centers care about that? Well, in 2022, it was estimated that data centers were now accounting for about 1% of the world's electricity. Um, so to kind of put that in perspective, 1% is equivalent to the energy consumption of the entire United Kingdom. So you see data centers, and they're really looking for ways that they can save on their electricity bills. And along comes this chip that it, you can be saving if you have racks and racks and racks of x64 processors, you could be spending 40, 30 to 40% less on your power if those were all ARM processors. So we start to see them sort of start to introduce these and push customers towards these ARM chips. And that's 30 to 40% is actually an, a conservative estimate because you have AWS who has actually sh said that they see up to 60% age of 60% uh, energy savings on their Graviton chips. And combined with those energy savings, uh, you also have with the ARM chip design, you need less cooling for them in the data center. So less energy means they have to spend less money on cooling them as well. Now, this is why they are attractive to data centers. But why do we care as an individual or as a small business or as a person? Why do we care about these efficiencies? And the answer is sustainability. Um, so I don't know how many of you, has anyone been following the Olympics this year? I am personally very invested in the Olympics, but one of the things this year at the Olympics is that France has very high sustainability goals and they wanted to make this the greenest Olympics to date. And one of the ways they went towards meeting these goals is they provided cardboard beds for all the athletes in the Olympic Village. And when I say cardboard bed, it's exactly what you see here. It's literally a bed where the headboard and the bed frame are all made out of cardboard and they just slapped a mattress on top of it. Um, so the idea is that at the end of the Olympics, they can just recycle these beds and it meets that goal. Now, I'm not telling you this story to try to encourage you all to go out and buy a cardboard bed. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. But really what I'm trying to illustrate is that it's becoming more and more common for companies and for countries to have these sustainability goals. And with these sustainability goals, um, we also see in the industry, there's this rising trend called green software engineering. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the practice, it's about re um, building sustainable software that is both carbon efficient and carbon aware and reducing the impact of your software on the environment. And so our machines are shown to be more efficient and more efficiencies mean that you are reducing your carbon emissions and for people that are have those sustainability goals, this is a way of just by moving to an ARM processor that you can take steps forward towards meeting those goals. 
And if you don't have sustainability goals and you're just looking for ways that you can kind of make a difference or kind of take small steps in order to reduce the impact of compute on our world, moving to an ARM processor is a really kind of I don't want to say easy because it's not always easy, but it's a small way that you can do that and kind of take that step forward. At GitHub, we've been working with an open source project called EcoCI Energy Estimation. Um, and this is an open source tool that you can actually add to your actions workflow file. So it, you just add it. It's actually an action that you add into your workflow file. And what it does is it estimates how much energy your actions workflow is using. So at the end of the run, it outputs a report. And you can look at that report. And you can see how much energy you're using. And you can track that over time, either towards sustainability goals or just for your own knowledge. Now, uh, so sustainability is something that's something I am personally very excited about. And I really, I, I mean, when I started working on ARM, it was really exciting to me when I found that out that by enabling these ARM runners, it's possible that I can help uh, open source developers or customers also make those changes towards becoming more sustainable. So coming back around to GitHub and our journey towards hosted runners on ARM, about a year ago, we started hearing a really big surge in the asks for ARM machines. And I was tasked with going to talk to customers and find out where this surge in, like big surge in ask was coming from. And what I found is that there was really three cohorts of customers that were asking for ARM. And the first cohort, perhaps the largest, were customers that were driven um, by AWS Graviton. So AWS is really pushing a lot of its customers towards Graviton, and they're touting cost savings and performance benefits, and customers were now deploying on Graviton. And now that they were doing that, they wanted to run their full CI CD pipelines native on Actions also on ARM so that they didn't have to use emulation because no one really wanted to go down that road of messing with that. So they were, wanted to run their whole pipelines natively on ARM. The second cohort were really just customers or developers that were just kind of curious about ARM and they just had heard things about it. They'd heard about the performance benefits or maybe the cost benefits and they were looking for a way that they could test that out natively on actions as well. And then the third, third cohort were people or customers that were deploying multi-architecture applications, cloud native applications and they needed to be able to test those applications on x64 and arm64 and they needed to be able to ensure that their applications run everywhere their end users are and their end users are on arm machines and that's what really kind of began our journey towards arm runners and we started with Macs. So at GitHub, we actually rack our own Macs. We have our own Mac cloud. So we started with M1s. Um, and those are on the Apple Silicon chip, which is a, an ARM processor to a certain extent. Uh, I don't want to get called out on that. But it, well, it is an ARM processor. And so we started with Macs. And those came out last year um, for paid plans. And then shortly after for open source. And that was our first, first kind of ARM offering. And then after that, when it came time to enable Linux and Windows, one of the biggest things when we are launching a runner is the image that goes onto a runner. Now, I want to clarify when I say image here, I'm talking about a VM image. So these aren't container images. Our runners run on VMs. So these are VM images. And GitHub actually builds and maintains their own VM images for our x64 Linux and run Windows runners. But when it came to ARM, we knew that we at GitHub were not the experts, per se, in ARM-based development. And we wanted someone who we could trust that would build this image for us. So we actually turned to ARM, the company, and we asked them if they would be willing to build these images for us. And they agreed, and they built actually the Linux Windows, Linux, sorry, the Linux image that is installed on our runners right now. And there's a Windows one coming soon, and that's what really kind of unblocked us from being able to launch these runners. And uh, shout out to Phil for being my hype man and showing my blog post in the last talk. But those actually launched in June and those are on paid plans right now. But they will be coming to open source by the end of this year. So there will be ARM runners for open source by the end of this year. And what this means with these hosted runners on ARM is now that now developers are unblocked from using ARM natively within Actions, and they don't have to use emulation anymore to get there, and they can start taking advantage of those price and performance benefits. 
Um, so talking, I want to talk about those benefits just a little bit um, and how they can impact you. Uh, so the cost, um, obviously this doesn't apply to open source, but if you are a company, uh, our ARM runners are priced lower than x64 runners. And the reason why we can do that is because data centers can price them lower, like we talked about, because they they don't have to pay as much for them either. And we're able to pass those cost savings down. And with that lower cost, you get a better price to performance ratio. So you can run more workflows for the same amount of money and get more performance. The other thing is the performance on ARM. So there's been a lot of talk about performance benefits of ARM, and I kind of want to say like your mileage will definitely vary. Uh, but we did some performance testing of our own before we launched the runners, and we found that for specific languages, you do see some performance benefits like C++. There was about a 5 to 7% performance boost if you're developing in C++ on ARM. The other thing that ARM, ARM chips have been shown to do better, and they've, they're better at certain tasks, and one of those is building containerized applications. So if that's something that you're doing, you may be able to take advantage of some of those performance benefits. Okay, so where does open source come in? Um, so software compatibility is a big, a big blocker when it comes to the adoption of ARM. I mean, most, most all, or all so applications and software are built to run on x64 processors and need to be recompiled to run on ARM. Like we talked about in the beginning, those open source libraries weren't yet building on ARM and they need to be recompiled. Right now, ARM has said that they hold a 10% share in the cloud computing market. But the goal now with these hosted runners on GitHub and with other rumblings and just the growth of ARM in the data center is that now open source can kind of start that drive towards ARM and adopting ARM. Because we all know that the world is built on open source. So if, R if open source doesn't adopt ARM, everyone else is blocked from it. Um, so I, I really believe that in the next few years, we will see that percentage point drive upward as we get more open source projects on ARM and adopting ARM. Um, and my hope is that GitHub can play a small part in that. That's it, that's my talk. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I appreciate you all being here um, to learn with me about GitHub's journey towards ARM. I hope you've learned a little bit more about ARM processors, maybe you learned something you didn't know, but hopefully, uh, I hope that one of your main takeaways are the sustainability benefits that you can really get from ARM processors. Um, it's something I'm very passionate about and excited about, and I hope I've been able to convey that to you and maybe spark a little bit of interest in you as well. And I think we'll have time for, for questions now also. Or none, everyone's hungry. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so you mentioned earlier that a lot of this was kind of initiated by customers or developers basically using emulation software um, to use runners to, to, to yeah. compile their, their ARM maps. Um, I'm wondering at like what point was the, the critical mass obvious that like hey we need to take action here on our side to start to migrate um, GitHub runners to for Yeah that's a good question. So yeah about this has always kind of been an ask like I said back back to 2019 but for a certain time we were blocked and then we did become unblocked but it really wasn't until about a year ago and that was when we were getting we just got so i think we just got hammered by so many at once that it was like i could not go more than a day without hearing about an ask for arm it was like every day that week i had heard at least three or four different asks for arm machines and that i don't know i don't have an exact number of how many customers were asking for it but it was just all of a sudden everyone was it felt like everyone was asking for arm um and yeah a lot of that when i actually went and talked to those customers a lot of that was graviton and aws's push to graviton oh yeah yeah 
It was actually, yeah, that's a good question. It was actually both. So we did have that community ask and it was gra- there was a very grassroots part of it. Um, but then there was also big companies as well. So that I think that's was what really kind of made us take notice. It was not only one or the other. We weren't hearing it from just one specific type of customer. We were hearing it from every type of customer and it was it was open source. It was small, small medium businesses and it was extremely large corporations. So it was... Since we saw it across every single cohort is when we kind of was all like, wow, we we need to actually take action on this. Yeah. Any other questions? Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. <laughs>